this week's Technique Tuesday video, I'll demonstrate Viking cables, a specific type of closed cable created by Elizabeth Lavold. Then I'll compare how Lavold's Viking cables differ from Barbara Walker's closed ring cables, which I demonstrated last week. As always, if you'd like to jump right to a specific point in the video, there are direct links down in the description. Viking cables are a type of closed cable that was developed by Elizabeth Lavold based on closed ring cables that Barbara Walker created back in the 1970s. These are traveling cables. Traveling cables are cables that are formed by multiple ropes of two knit stitches, which travel across a background of purl stitches and as they meet each other they cross and, and they go back and forth. So a closed cable is one that just appears out of the background of purl stitches and then ends somewhere in the background. One of the qualities of these closed cables is that the background of purl stitches is maintained and that as you want new ropes to appear, you use increases to create those ropes. And then you have a decrease every time they go away. Here's another example of one of Lavold's Viking cables that I placed in a, an Aran sweater. And you can see that I start the S here and end the S here. Everything else remains consistent, but I do start and end that S stitch or S hitch every so often. So I'm about to begin another repeat of this particular cable. So I'm going to show you how these cables are begun. I'm going to be uh, working across until I've worked eight stitches. I'm going to work the stitches as they present until I've worked eight stitches. And then I'm going to work two increases side by side in order to create two stitches. Then I will work a wrong side row working the stitches as they present to me. And then I will work another row where I produce two more increases between the first two increases. Okay, so I've worked my border and then I've worked my two pearls, two knits, and four pearls. So I'm right here. I'm ready to begin this lifted increase. To work the first increase, I'm going to work it in the second pearl bump under the needle. Not the one that's right under the needle, but the second one. So I take my left hand needle and I come under that pearl bump like this. And then I work it as a knit stitch. For the second increase, I'm going to create it in the purl bump that is directly under the needle, not the one that's two rows below, but the one that's under the needle. So I can do it in two ways. One is I can just insert my needle through there and then grab the yarn and pull it through, or I can put it up on the needle if that's easier for me, and then I can work it as a knit stitch. And then the original stitch that's still on the needle is now going to be worked as a regular purl. So I'm going to need a new, another set of increases. I want to explain why the first increase we go two purl bumps below the needle, but the second one we go one below. So I'm just going to work the first three stitches rather than the first four. Before we work the first increase, we have to work this stitch. So you see right now we have pearl bump under the, these stitches that are on the needle. But when I work this pearl stitch, that pearl stitch that's below the needle right now becomes the, the pearl bump that's two pearl bumps below the needle. And that's because the stitches that are on the needle right now become the stitches that are under the needle here. And we want these increases to be on the same row. And in order to do that, when we work it underneath a, uh, a stitch that is an, it has been worked, we go two stitches below the needle. So we enter below that pearl bump, that second pearl bump, we knit it. And then we can come under the first pearl bump under this needle. You can just pull it through like that. And then we purl the stitch that's still on the needle and continue on. 
I've worked a wrong side row, worked the stitches as they presented, and now I need to work this row. So I'm going to be working a cable crossing right here, but then I'm going to be working two more increases. So now what you'll see is I'm go going to knit the stitch that I had created last time, and then I'm going to create an increase. So I knit the stitch. So when we're on the, the knit side of the fabric, rather than trying to lift the purl bump, we can just lift the left leg of that stitch that's two stitches, two rows below the needle. We lift that up and we want to knit it through the back because we want to knit it so that it doesn't twist. So we're going right through the center of that stitch in order to knit it. Now again, when we do the increase on the, from the left hand side, we're going to lift the leg of the stitch that's right below the needle. You can just lift it from back from the back like this and put it on the needle. And then you just knit through that stitch. So now you've got your two increases and now you can actually work the stitch that was on the needle. So now we have our four stitches that are becoming the two ropes um, that are going to be traveling across the background. Once again, I'm at those two knit stitches. So I work the first knit stitch. I lift the left leg of the stitch that's two rows below that needle. I knit it so through the back so that it's not going to twist. Then I can lift the right leg of the stitch that is under the needle, put it on, and then knit it. And then I knit the stitch that was originally on the needle. So now I have my four stitches. So I want to show you how you end, how you close one of these types of Viking cables. To close a Viking cable, after the final crossing row where the, the two ropes are meeting each other, you're going to work a wrong side row as normal. And then you're going to work two rows that have decreases in them, a right side row and a wrong side row. So just like it took three rows to get one of these cables started, it's going to take three rows to finish it. So what I have right now is I have the, the, the cable has crossed and it, the stitches have met each other. So I have four knit stitches in a row. So I'm going to work the stitches as they present until I get to the first knit stitch. So what we're going to do is, is, is we're going to eliminate the two center stitches first. And we're going to do that by first working a left leaning decrease. So this stitch right here will be on top and the one next to it will disappear. And then we'll work a right leaning decrease, which will again eliminate this center stitch and keep that one on top. So a left leaning decrease is an SSK. So you slip two stitches one at a time as if to knit. You insert your left needle through the fronts of those stitches. And what you'll see is that your working needle is pointing to the left the same way that that symbol is pointing to the left. And when you complete the decrease, you have a left leaning decrease. Now we want a right leaning decrease. That's a knit two together. When your working needle is through the stitches, it's pointing to the right, just as the symbol does. And when you complete the decrease, you have a right leaning decrease. So again, we work until we get to those four stitches that we want to eliminate. And we work a left leaning decrease, an SSK. And that eliminates the second stitch because it's underneath the stitch on the right. And now we're going to work a knit two together. That decreases the other center stitch. And now we purl across. So far we've eliminated two out of the four stitches. The next decrease that we see looks very similar. It has that same angle like this, only there's a dot. So that indicates that from this face of the fabric, from the right side of the fabric, that's going to create a purl stitch. It's a, it's a purl decrease with respect to the right side of the fabric, but we're going to be working it on the wrong side of the fabric. 
So we're going to be working it as a knit. So we in fact are going to be working another knit two together here and another SSK here. And what that's going to do is it's going to put this purl stitch on top of that knit so that knit will disappear. It will put this purl stitch on top of this knit so that one will disappear. I have four knit stitches here and uh, which look like four purl stitches on the right side of the work and we're only going to work the first three. So I'm going to work one, two, three and now I'm going to work a knit two together. And now when I get to these two stitches, I'm going to work my SSK. So I've worked that and then I work across to the next one. Again, I've got my four stitches. I have to stop one stitch early because these two stitches are going to be decreased. I'm going to work a knit two together and then an SSK. And then I work the rest of the stitches as they present. And now you can see that I have uh, completed that S hitch. What I have here are two swatches that both have S hitch cables. The difference is where I have the needle here is actually where this repeat ends. It's the same place where I have ended over here. And what you'll see is that this one looks a little shorter and it's rounder and there's more sort of pearl background real estate. Both of these cables are worked over 24 rows. This one is the Viking Cables ver version. That is the one that Elizabeth Laveld does. And this one uses Barbara Walker's closed ring cable version. And so the difference is in the way the two cables are started, these start, it takes one row to start and one row to end. And Laveld's takes three to start and three to end. So the S itself appears to be more elongated. And the second difference has to do with how these increases are worked in each type. As we've seen in Lavold's, the increases are created between existing stitches. So you take zero stitches and add four in a, in a place where there weren't stitches previously. In Walker's method, you start with a single purl stitch that you then increase up to five stitches. And so the difference here is that this is actually two stitches wider because whenever those ropes meet, there are five stitches involved rather than four stitches in those crossings. I will put a link to these charts down in the video description. So if you want to take a look at them and try practicing them and seeing how the two different techniques um, compare, you can do that. The techniques used for creating closed cables can also be used to modify existing traveling cables. Some cables will be more easily modified using Lavold's technique, while others will be more easily modified using Barbara Walker's technique. In many cases, you can even convert a Viking cable to a closed ring cable or vice versa once you understand the fundamental differences between them, which is that Lavold's method creates the two ropes between existing stitches, while Walker's method creates the two ropes within an existing purl stitch. If you have any comments or questions about today's video or suggestions for videos you'd like to see in the future, you can leave those down in the comments below or join the discussion in my Ravelry group, Rocks Rocks. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next week.